Hello dear YouTubers and welcome back to Bars Games. I am Skyquake, your host as always, and today we're going to be starting the first episode of a brand new series called War Game Red Dragon Walkthroughs. Now, if you're a new player to War Game Red Dragon or just struggling to understand how to build decks, this tutorial series will be for you. Um, I have about a thousand hours in Wargame Red Dragon to give a little bit of context and we have a very big Wargame community on uh, the discourse that I'm a part of and a lot of newcomers come and they keep asking like you know how do I play this game how do I make the decks so Wargame Red Dragon for those of you who don't know is a real-time strategy game that's based on an alternate history I would say of a cold war getting hot and if various different countries that are classified between blue four and red four blue four being mostly your nato allies or western uh, aligned allies such as uh, the usa um, uk germany france um, as well as countries as sweden japan and south africa on the red four side you have countries such as the soviet union china north korea um Yugoslavia and Finland. Uh, I am leaving a few of them out, but uh, those are the, the big heavy hitters, as they would say. So today we're going to be starting with a USA armor tutorial. Now, if you want to feel like, you know, you're going to go, me and my free brims, you know, dispensing freedom everywhere. Just rolling over at the enemy. Think again. Although America's armored tab is one of the best in the game, it has some chinks in its armor. So I will be going through them one um, tab at a time and we will uh, see where it leads us. So, a little bit of context of how USA is in Wargame Red Dragon and how to play it. So, USA armor deck specifically is one of the best multi-purpose decks you can have in the game. They're great for offensive as well as defensive capabilities. Comparatively, they're one of the best staying powers in keeping a territory. Um, I would say rank them, in my personal opinion, up there with, for example, Germany armor decks. Um, with the added benefits, you have the USA um, Air Force <laughs> coming in to save the day. So let's dive into it. So, the one big thing that you will need for any type of US armored uh, deck is a CV. Or not just an armored deck, but for any deck that would be. So, you have a, f a few s different selections. You've got your typical Jeep over here. You've got a little bit more expensive APC, CPC, as, it, as it's called. Uh, you get an M60 command tank, um, which is 140 points, and command free brooms. Um, the Abrams command tank is the most expensive, but it's also the best armor. So, there are many different philosophies comparatively. You can get the Humvee, and you can get seven of them, which is pretty nice. Or you can get an Abrams, and you can only get three CVs. But they're very tough to kill. But if you lose one, then it's much harder to replace as well, because if you have only three and you need to take more than that, then that means you need to take its, uh, a second CV card as well. Um, which for the US is not recommended, and I will get into that in a moment. So, for me personally, I usually go with the Humvees. Um, being the fact is you get more of them, and in this game, numbers do matter as well as quality. So, unless you are going to be in an area where you really, really need an Abrams for the armor protection, I would say go with the Humvees. The Humvees are easier to disguise as well, um, and an Abrams command tank, as soon as it's spotted, um, the enemy will rain down all of the different types of healing cluster bombers or artillery on that position to delete it from the grid square. So, we have our CV. Next up, and this is the big, I would say, Achilles heel of any US deck, and that is logistics. If you do not have enough logistics to supply your troops with enough fuel, ammo, fuel, <laughs> and uh, repairs, they're not going to go anywhere. Because the Free Brooms loves its oil. That's hence all of the memes. <laughs> so, for your armored core, which is mainly comprised of tanks, it, they do not go very far without fuel. So, in that perspective, and with that in mind, I usually go with the Hammett. It's got a great supply of 2,400 liters, um, it's got a great road speed as well, and it's got a little bit of armor that will help protect it against shrapnel fire from artillery, which 
in Worgen Red Dragon is always a handy thing to have. So we're going to go with the 6 over there. And then we're going to go with fobs. Now, fobs are the only buildings in Wargame Red Dragon, and you can't actually see them, they're that big. So fob stands for Forward Operating Base. Now, these guys are basically where your resupply trucks can go to once they've unloaded all of their equipment to the front lines. They can come back to the fob and resupply there, and your vehicles aren't just a one-hit wonder. So the fob has 16,000 liters of supplies, and this can be diverted uh, for all three types, which is um, weapons slash ammo, you have fuel and you have spare parts. Now you can turn each uh, one of these three uh, different categories off independently, or you can have all three of them on. The choice is up to you. So we're going to go with fobs, and we're going to actually get two fobs, because you can really run out of supplies really quickly, especially if you have um, helicopters in the mix as well. So we're going to go with two fobs. And then the Super Chinook. It's got 100 liters more supply than the Hemet. Now, the Super Chinooks are very situational and you don't always use them. But especially if it's a big map, a 4v4 map or a 3v3 map, your Hemet is going to take a while to get to the front lines and then resupply and get back again. That's where these guys are in. Uh, Super Chinooks, obviously, it's a helicopter so it can fly to a position much quicker at 320 kilometers now, so roughly double the speed of the Hemet. Um, so it can get to the front lines much quicker, especially if you have long logistic trains. So that basically rounds up the logistics tab for us. So let's head over to infantry. Now, the US infantry is not the best, unless you're um, doing US Marines. Um, Marines are just badass, honestly. It's, they, there are very few units in Wargamer Dragon that compare to the US Marines. However, we don't have access to them since we are US Armor. So, we're gonna go with what I usually recommend people to go with. And for a new person, it's a great balance to go with as well. So, you basically only have Rifleman 90, Normal Rifleman, Lad Stinger C's, Lad Stinger A's, Red Eyes, and Assault Engineers. So, let's let's start from the top and work our way through. So, so, Assault Engineers, as you can see from the very pretty picture, it's a flamethrower unit. Now, napalm slash flamethrower units are very situationally effective. Um, these guys are good in cities or in forests. Um, and since a lot of the massive war, war game Red Dragon is forest, it is a fun option to use, but it's not really an effective one. Because uh, they don't really have a lot of good weapons to fight against, um, say for example, a quad stack of both Australia. So, although they're fun to play with, and uh, if you want to make a meme deck, go, for, go right ahead, but I will steer clear of them. Then you have the Red Eyes. Um, now, with infantry, this is the other in, uh, thing that I need to mention. You don't just get the infantry, you also get the transport that they come in. So, with the Red Eyes and most of these vehicles, they get the wonderful Bradley IAV. Um, and you can hover between the two different stats by going through here. As you can see, the M2A Bradley has four TOW 2 Sackloss missiles with a range of 3600 meters and that wonderful Bushmaster 25 millimeter, which can shred infantry and light vehicles. Of course, the missile is for more heavy tank targets with an AP power of 25. And we will get into those stats a little bit more into detail later on. So, back to Red Eyes. So, Red Eyes is the very earliest form of um, surface-to-air ground infantry weapons you can have. So, I do not go with these. I have seen people play with them, um, mainly as meme decks. Now... There is an argument to be made because you can get 13 of them, um, but with an accuracy of 35% and its range is so poor, you do not really expect to hit much with that. The last Stinger A gets the FM, FIM-92A Stinger, which is, as we all know, one of the best surface-to-air uh, infantry weapons. Uh, with an accuracy of 50%, its airplane range isn't that great, but it's got good range against helicopters at least. So these are very, very good in ambushes in cities when uh, low-flying helicopters or aircraft come in. These stingers will most probably, at least one of them will hit their target, either taking it out or severely damaging it. Um, although you can only get 9 of them, it's a much better trade-off, I would say, compared to the red-eye. But then, 
Even better than that, you have the Stinger Seas. They've got a s the same range, but an accuracy of 70%, and that basically means you're guaranteed to hit at least once or twice. Um, so these are actually what I'm going to go with first. We're going to get them. Um, Stingers are just great because they, A, cannot be taken out by such... Uh, um, or how shall I rather say seed aircraft um, which is very very big nuisance to for example anti-aircraft systems so you can keep these guys in the city or in the forest line and they can just ambush uh, aircraft and most of the time take them out pretty easily as well afterwards you have riflemen now the base rifleman comes with an M16 an M72 law and an M60 general purpose machine gun so these are handy they do get the bradley as well but the law is not a great anti-tank rocket launcher it has an ap power 13 which unless you're going to be fighting old t-55s or t-62s they're not great and it's going to require multiple missiles and rockets to take care of the target so that brings us to the rifleman 90. you get the m16 uh, again however you get the 84 rocket launcher and still m60 general purpose machine gun 84 as you can see has a much better accuracy and a 19 ap power so unless it's a super heavy tank you know your best t80 uh, tank that you have in the game or t90 or even a t72s this thing will probably take it out in one shot so we're gonna go with that um you can go through them so you have the m2a1 bradley over here which is just as an eye tone instead of the toe 2 uh, marginal accuracy and ap power difference um actually we're gonna go with the rifleman 90 with the m2a1 bradley it's a slightly less powerful rocket launcher than the bradley but you still get the same infantry and it's a, about 10 points cheaper and get six five or six cars more of them so we're gonna grab three of those um, I'm gonna keep this slot open for now we don't always have to fill all of them out we can uh, revise it when we get back so let's move on to support one of my favorites <laughs> decks as many can attest to so support is where you get all of your vehicles such as anti-aircraft systems artillery mortars and uh, long-range uh, SAM sites so for artillery wise I always recommend people to go with at least one artillery piece now there's two trains of thought that I have found to be very effective in Wargamer Dragon one of them is you could go with the M109A6 Paladin amazing system has great dispersion and decent ish range for an artillery system you can get two of them at a 120 a pop and these guys will when used correctly, obliterate any target you point them at. Um, you can fire uh, five rounds a minute, so that's a salvo of five rounds per artillery piece, which is pretty decent, and it has an HE power 7. So how AP power and HE power works is different, but HE power suppression is very important for artillery. HE power means basically the damage that it does, but also suppression is very good in terms of like if you want to suppress a, a big area like with tanks in a forest line or a tree or infantry in, in cities um that's a very very big um factor to take into account on the other hand you can go with the m110a2 now this is the eight inch for our american viewers or the 203 millimeter rounds now this bad boy only has two rounds uh magazine and it can only fire two rounds a minute so basically once it's shot it shots it needs to completely reload again so it doesn't fire a lot of rounds a minute however its ag power is insane it has similar dispersion to the m109a6 and slightly better range actually but you have an HE power of 10 with suppression of 467 compared to a 7 and 357 for the Paladin and you can get three of them as well um, so that is a bit of a trade-off but it depends on how you feel for a new beginner I would say go with the Paladin it's a better choice uh, you get more rounds on target so go with the Paladin now next up you have more units now Mortars can be very effective. They're short range, but if you want to clear out infantry or suppress an area or throw smoke shells very quickly and then rapidly move your artillery away so they don't get counter batteried, mortars are very effective, but they do require a lot of micromanaging. So do be aware of that. I personally am not a big fan of using mortars. Um, I feel that artillery is better because you can 
keep them in the back of the lines and just plink away and you have to do a little bit less migrating on them but uh, if you feel like you are up for it definitely by all means the m106a2 is a great option for this deck however we're gonna keep uh, with what i would recommend new beginners to do and you know basically learn the game as you go along so next up is aa now you've got your short range um gatling guns <laughs> for lack of a better word you've got the mc163 vulcan at 25 points a pop and the m163 pivad basic it's the same gun however the Vulcan is a non radar guided AA and an M163 payload is radar guided so what does that mean so radar guided weapons usually have longer and better range and accuracy however they can be countered with uh, uh, suppression of, of enemy air defense or seed planes um, so you will have to turn your weapons off if you know your enemy has seed or if uh, you're playing against a friend and uh, you know his playstyle so for this purposes I do however still say go with the pavad um, the pavads are really really effective um, that they're great for short range defense so i'm actually going to say go with two of them next up you've got the chaparrales now m48a3 chaparral is a non-radar guided um medium range missile launch system so as you can see it's got a great range against helicopters 3300 meters and okay range against airplanes but you have 12 of them which is very effective and sea planes cannot target it so for 70 points a pop and you can get four of them that's a very very good trade-off um, i would even say you can even go for the infrared a1 chaparral you have a slightly less and weaker range on everything as well as accuracy but you can get seven of them but for this purposes we're going to go with the best because we are the best so chaparral there we go then last but not least, you've got your long-range SAM weapons, your IHOCs. So you got the normal plane IHOC at 60 points pop, as well as the IHOC PIP-3. Um, PIP-3 is one of the best ones, I would say. It's, it only has three missiles, as you can see, but it has 60% accuracy rate with 9 HE pairs. So that means 9 um, HE hit damage on an aircraft, which could one-shot an aircraft when hit, pro when hit properly. Um, it's got a very good range against helicopters and a very good range against airplanes. So we're going to go with the IHOC P3. So the idea of, with their support deck is this. You have got your paladins way in the back, um, you know, safely protected. Make sure that they don't get uh, counter batteries as well. Um, a very good tip for this is to always keep your um, artillery on the move after you fired. Um, that way you minimize the chances of it getting destroyed with uh, in incoming enemy fire. Your pivots are your short range weapons. They're great for close in helicopters or planes that come in too close and they can just throw a billion rounds of lead at the target and make it go away. You've got the chaparrals for more medium uh, defense and then you've got the IHOC P3 for long range defense. So the big thing with Wargamer Dragon is you do need to incorporate various um, aspects of your army. It's not just going to be one Wunderwaffe that will win the day. You need to have a very good, strong, solid defensive line in the form of AA. And if you have something for short, medium and long range, the chances of the enemy being able to bring out something successfully in terms of aircraft um, after the first one or two planes that come out is greatly diminished and if you can control the skies you already have won a big part of the battle moving on to what everyone's been waiting. so you've got everything from patents to starships to the prototype m8 ags or the mbt7 uh, prototype that was co-developed with germany and then the m1 a, well, M1 Abrams up to the M1 A2 Abrams for this particular game with the time period that it's set in. So we're going to go from best to lowest actually. So we're going to go get the M1 A2 Abrams because it's just so cool. Um, it's got one of the best armors that you can get with 22 frontal armor. Um, accuracy of 70 percent with the best range that a tank can have with a gun at 2275 meters. Stabilizer is 65%, so this is a big factor in tanks. A stabilizer means that your tank can hit the targets 65% of the time whilst on the move, with an accuracy of 70%. So these two uh, modifiers are very, very important to look at when you're choosing a tank. AP power of 24, so it, it can pen anything, basically, in Wargamer Dragon, with a 
very decent HP power free against uh, soft targets. So this thing is a monster. In, to put it in plain simple English, this thing is a monster. However, you only get two of them. So these tanks are not to be thrown in the first wave and get killed immediately. Um, they're very situational with heavy tanks and every nation that you come across in Working Red Dragon. Never bring them out too early. Because although, yes, they can take on um, several tanks, it's lesser, much easier. Um, the problem is, is, more likely than not, you will have artillery targeting this thing, or aircraft targeting this thing, because of its high value. Um, so it's best to use these ones when you're doing a big frontal push, when, you have finally, when you've worn down the enemy's defenses, or are exploiting a Blitzkrieg opportunity that comes along. So be mindful of that. On to our next tank, we'll be going with the M181, M18, mm, let's decide here. So, these two are very, very similar. This one has a slightly better AP power, but you only get three of them, uh, whilst the M1A1 HA Abrams, you get four, which you might argue is not that big of a deal, but in Wargame Red Dragon, numbers do count for something. So we're gonna actually going to grab that one. Uh, just for the fact, it's slightly less AP for, for that, but it's 15 points cheaper and get one more. So we're going to go with that. Now the mainstay of your tank force will probably be between the M1A1 Abrams and the M11P Abrams. What's the difference? So the M11 AP Abrams is still equipped to, with the 105mm gun. Has uh, decent AP power still, but uh, it's not as powerful as the 120mm from the M1A1 Abrams and upwards, as you can see. Uh, quite a big difference um, but we're gonna get the um, M11P Abrams as well as the M1A1 these guys are more your mid-tier tanks um, they're the guys that you do pushes with and uh, to control the front lines in the initial stages of the game because trust me you will go through tanks and you do need a cheap option a medium option and an expensive option in terms of what you're gonna bring to the battlefield as well as with the Americans in mind, a lot of logistics. With that said, another one that I usually go with is either the Super M16 or the MBT-70 or the M1 Abrams. This, this is a trick one, so basically it's up to you. The reason why I say the Super M60, it's got less armor than the Abrams, but it has a slightly better AP power, which I feel like for a cheap tank is what you really need, and you can get a lot of them. So we're going to go with that. The MBT-7 is the prototype tank basically that came before the Abrams. This was a co-development with Germany uh, before um, a bunch of uh, very long-winded reasons why this um, joint venture didn't work out. The um, Americans wanted to use one type of gun, the Germans wanted to use a different type of gun. They couldn't agree on something and then eventually broke up and made their own separate tanks. But uh, for the MBT-70, it's a, a unique option, to say the least, in the sense you can get... Uh, it's one of the only US tanks that can fire missiles as well. Um, so it's got six Shillelagh um, ATGMs with a decent accuracy and a decent AP power as well. Um, these are quite fun to use um, on occasion. But for the purposes of this, we're going to go with the M1 Abrams just because it's a cheap spam tank. Um, these guys you'd usually use at the start to mid-tier of the game um, in order to basically break down enemy's defenses. And if you lose a few of them, it's not that big of a loss uh, compared to, for example, an M1A2 or an M1A1. And that rounds out uh, the armored column. So next up, recon. One of the key factors of war in Red Dragon is intelligence. You need to know where your enemy is, when your enemy is, at what time it is. So you need to have eyes in the back of your skull everywhere to make sure that you can accurately make decisions and bring out the right units at the right time to counter any possible threat that may come your way. Knowing is half the battle. So with that in mind, we're going to go with a Kiowa. The Kiwa is a very decent uh, recon helicopter. It's got. Um, where did we go? I did have something to say with this. <laughs> Alright, so the recon uh, Kiwa is very good optics, very small, so it's difficult to spot. So we're gonna go with that. It's You can get seven of them. You've got the M134 minigun, so it actually has something to defend itself with, which 
is a quite nice thing to have because usually these things are sitting ducks and then usually i like to go for ground recon as well um so we're gonna go with the bradley um however we're just gonna go with a plain bradley uh recon vehicles i feel shouldn't be expensive you just have something that can see things and report it back now an option that um depending on the country you're playing as and you can even do this with the us is going for for example rangers in the us's case to get infantry recon these are a little bit more time consuming but if you can use these ones correctly you can get behind enemy lines and scout their base and see any potential artillery systems or what they're bringing or even cause some mayhem and taking out a cv or two so this is always a fun option but it does require a little bit more patience and microing because it usually means you have to go around the outskirts of the map and take care of um, that kind of stuff and not be spotted as well so it's a bit of a high risk high reward thing but uh, for this purposes, we're going to leave them out because uh, I believe the Bradley and the Kyo will be more than sufficient. Then we move along to the vehicle tab. So this one is a bit of a mixed bag. So vehicle tab is basically all of the miscellaneous vehicles that doesn't quite fit in the category of the tanks or of the support or the recon tab. So you've got everything from the M67A1 Zippos to um, Sackcloth Missile APCs. And you've got the Wally or the M91A1 ITV. Um, and you've got this funky little dude, the Antos. For all you War Thunder fans out there, you know how much of a pain this thing is with six recoilless rifles. Um, you also get the M163CS, which is basically a cheaper version that uh, of the 163 Vulcan that you have over here. Big difference though is that the vehicle one actually has a stabilizer so it can fire on the move. These are actually really really good for very short range defense or even base defense against enemy helicopters. So we're gonna grab one of those. Um, and the combat is basically like an early Bradley. Um, they're pretty fun. They've got a 45 millimeter uh, cannon. Uh, it can take out ground and uh, helicopter targets. With an accuracy of 70% and a 40% stabilizer with an 5 AP power is really, really good. Um, these are also really fun, but we're going to hold off on this one and we're going to move on to the other tabs to see what we can fit into the stack. Now, onto the helos. Now, pride and joy of the American uh, <laughs> uh, military is Cobras. Um, these are basically the best. So you've got Cobras with the Ito Saklos missiles, which are very, very accurate at 60%, with 20 AP power. And you've got HE-1E Cobras, which is slightly worse. Uh, it only has the normal toes with four missiles, um, but they all have Hydras. And then this one just has uh, FFAR um, Dumbfire rockets on it as well. The Little Bird is equipped with a 40mm frag uh, grenade launcher. Um, these are actually pretty fun to play with. They can be a bit of a menace against infantry, but uh, not really worth getting in your lineup. Same with the Hogs. They've got uh, the 40mm and 70mm Dumbfire rockets, or just the Dumbfire rockets, depending on the version. For this, we're just going to grab a couple of the Cobras, so we're going to get two cards of the AH-1F Cobras. Now, helicopters are also a very situational weapon. You're not just going to go... Um, uh, Vietnam era and just send in helicopters. Strangely enough, the tactic does actually work if your enemy doesn't expect it, but expect that it will probably not work until you've made a path for them. Um, helicopters are great against tank pushes, especially. If your defensive line is crumbling a little bit, one of two of these can really, really take care of at least 16 to 20 tanks, or at least hold the line long enough until reinforcements show up. And then last, but certainly not least, we're gonna go with the air tab. Now, I mean, you can't have a US armored deck without an A-10 Warthog. This thing is legendary. It's got that beautiful Gao 8A Avenger. Um, 30 millimeter cannon with so much firepower to it. Um, if you have dominance of the skies, this thing can be a menace. It's got six Mavericks as well as that auto cannon, and it can that can literally just shred through tanks. Um, so these two, the, the, these two, this uh, A10 Thunderbolt comes with two of them. Um, so we're gonna grab that for sure. Now 
this is where a bit of a micmac. So with aircraft, you've got everything from ground support, such as the A-10. You've got air superiority fighters. You've got um, heating cluster bombers, which are good against hard vehicle, uh, hard targets, such as tanks and uh, um, other vehicles. And then you've got AOE bombers, which are more for soft targets, uh, such as infantry or light-skinned vehicles. And then you've got napalm bombers, because who doesn't like to burn stuff <laughs> um, and then you have your the aircraft that I mentioned er earlier the suppression of enemy air defense aircraft or SEED as it's colloquially known um, these are very very handy so I would always recommend getting SEED um, you've got a few options you've got the Raven which has one of the best ranged um, SEED missiles in the game with the AGM-888 Harm uh, with 5200 meter range uh, it Outranges basically every AA system, which every meter counts in this game, which is very important, and it's got very good accuracy. However, you only get one of them at 160 points a pop. So if, if uh, you do not maintain this one well enough, it can get taken out so quickly. So I usually go with the Prowler. It has a slightly worse range, but it's still better than most AA systems. It's got very good accuracy and even better AP power, actually, with the AGM-78D standard. So, and you can get two of them at 110 pop. So, definitely go with them. Um, Prowler is always a good option to go with. And then you also have this <laughs> F117 Nighthawk with its two GBU paveways. Um, it got nerfed uh, a while back by Wargamer Dragon uh, developers, and it's it used to be a lot more stealthy and, and it uh, was very difficult to take out. Um, uh, quite a few years ago but now it can basically be seen by a lot of the AA systems and it's not really that effective so it's more of a situational thing but it's super cool to see fly so we're gonna skip the f17 f117 nighthawk for now but it's always a good option to go regardless if it can be spotted or not really really good against uh, armored vehicles then you have the F11, uh, F-111F artwork. Now, this is the Heathen Cluster Bomber, as you can see from all of the red marks. So this is the hard skin uh, bomber, so taking out tanks and stuff. You take one of these out, drop your uh, bombs on them, and your armored threat will be evaporated. So I'm going to get that, because Heathen Cluster is always a must. Now, air superiority is always an interesting one. So you can either go with or without it. I usually say I'm not that big of a fan in the terms of like getting an air superiority fighter. If I need to, I will have one. Um, but you can go without one. If you have if you have confidence in your air defense network on the ground, you can kind of mitigate having an air superiority fighter. So air superiority fighter is designed to take on other air superiority fighters or air airplanes in general. In the regards of the F-14 Tomcat, it has the best uh, missiles with the uh, AIM-54 Phoenix. Once again, you can only get one of these though. So you have the options such as the F-15A or even the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Um, where's the... there we go, the Block 52. So these are all very, very good options for air superiority fighters and I recommend any of them. But for this purposes, we're actually not going to go with an air superiority fighter. We're going to go with the F-15D. Um, this is your AOE bomber. You only get one of them, but it has four 1,000 kilogram bombs, which is insane. Um, you throw this in a town with infantry, which is a forest line with uh, infantry and soft skin vehicles defending it, and even sometimes tanks, it can really, really mess them up with a 20 HE power. So we're going to grab that. And then we have five points left, actually. So we can make a decision here. We can either go with another plane or some more infantry. In regards to this, I don't really feel like getting more infantry is necessary. Um, we've got 36, quick mental math here, uh, 40, 54 cars of uh, Rifleman 90, which should be sufficient for any um, major offensives. Um, this is an armor deck after all, so you're going to be focused more on armored stuff anyways. So I feel then a aircraft is of more use. And in this case, I think we're going to go with a napalm bomber, actually. The F4S Phantom 2 has 8 340 kilogram napalm bombs. Now, napalm, again, very situational, but it can be so effective, especially if there's maps with choke points such as bridges. And napalm bomber, if, if you spot an enemy column, you feel like you can't take them on in that particular moment. 
napalm bombers drop it on the bridge and you basically suppress that area for quite a while the, the units cannot cross uh, or even in a town with a lot of infantry napalm bombs can be very very useful there so we're gonna grab two and we're gonna have a quick look then at what we have so as you can see we've got 19 units of logistics 61 units of infantry 28 support units 81 tank units 14 recon units 18 vehicle units 14 helo and 9 plane units this is a very very good starter deck for the US armored um, that you can go with once again this isn't the best or something I would say that necessarily fits your playstyle um, this series is more focused on getting you up to speed on what the pros and cons are of the US armor decks and all of the subsequent other countries that we will be doing for all of the different um, variations that you can go with but for a starter deck this is a great way to practice um, as I said the US is a very good 50-50 um, um, country to play as very good offense very good t defense um, and they're, uh, they have, they don't have that many weaknesses the only weaknesses for an armor deck specifically is the riflemen aren't the best fighters I would say in this game um, as well as you're lacking a little bit in a medium range AA capacity and the logistics can be a nightmare if you don't look after it so make sure that your tanks have enough fuel um, especially on those bigger maps uh, from 2v2 to 4v4 upwards even on some 1v1 maps it can get a little bit dicey so if you're doing a big push make sure your vehicles are all fueled up and uh, repaired before you send them in because they can literally uh, I've seen this so many times new players they send in the Abrams thinking you know um, born in the USA free brooms and then their tanks run out of fuel in the middle of the field and it just are easy pickings for for the taking so definitely go with that i didn't do naval today because this series is more focused on the main aspects of wargamer dragon although naval is a very fun thing um it's very generic and i will make a just a normal generic blue for naval um deck that you can see which units are the best at the later stage but uh, that is my us armor tutorial um, please let me know how you usually make your US armor tutorials, uh, what do you like of my deck, what do you disagree with, what would you rather go with. Um, I would love to hear your comments uh, down below. Also if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe, it really helps out the channel a lot. And if you feel um, obliged to, please uh, uh, visit our Patreon link down below, um, we have got a bunch of different cool um, tiers we got there and with so many different um, packages that you can go with, very well priced as well. Um, it would be really appreciated uh, for a small YouTuber like me um, to help keep the channel growing and running. But for now that is all, thank you so much for watching, have a pleasant day, goodbye.